On the way to building our 8-bit CPU, we can build this digital clock first. Each digit is stored as 4 bits, and thus we need a circuit that converts each 4-bit nibble into a number which can be displayed. This circuit does exactly that, and it's made from only three different elements. These are called the NOT gate, the AND gate, and the OR gate. In this video, we're going to go over these gates and an extra gate called the buffer gate. In the first part of the journey, we'll start with the electric switch. Now, we all have a lot of experience with switches. We know electricity comes into the house, we have a light bulb, and when electricity is applied, the light glows. For our experiments, I'm going to use a battery instead of the electricity that comes in through the wall socket. I've connected eight of these 1.5 volt batteries together to make a single 12 volt battery, and this is connected via wires to the globe. I can draw it another way with special symbols. This is the battery, this is the globe, and these are the wires connecting them. Electricity flows from the plus side of the battery through the wires, through the globe, then back to the battery. The electricity transfers the energy stored in the battery to the globe, and this is what produces the light. This is said to be a closed circuit. To see if we have a closed circuit, we should be able to draw a continuous line from the plus side of the battery to the minus side of the battery. If there's a break in the circuit and we can't find a continuous line, then the circuit's open and no electricity flows. I'm going to turn this circuit into a flashlight or a torch by adding a switch. We know switches have an on and an off position. When the switch is on, the light goes on, and when the switch is off, the light goes off. I built a simple circuit on a breadboard with a battery, a switch, and a light globe. When the switch is on, electricity flows from the battery to the light globe. This is said to be a closed circuit. When the switch is off, the electricity is prevented from flowing to the light globe, and this is said to be an open circuit. When the switch is on, the light's on, and when the switch is off, the light goes off. Now, I can draw an alternate diagram which is an abstraction. Note that the diagram doesn't show the source of the electricity. This is called a buffer, and it's drawn as a triangle on its side, and it has one input and one output. We treat the switch position as the input, and the globe status as the output. We can draw a table which shows the relationship between these with the switch position on the left and the globe status on the right. When the switch is off, the globe is off, and when the switch is on, the globe's on. We refer to this table as being a truth table, and it tells us how this particular gate operates. If we look at the switch a bit more carefully, we can see that it actually has three contacts. The middle contact is called common, and the outer contacts are called on and off. When the switch is on, there's an electrical connection between common and on. And when the switch is off, there's actually an electrical connection between common and off. Interestingly, the on contact is on the opposite side of the switch compared to the on position. This just makes the switch easier to manufacture. The point I want to get at, though, is that common is always connected to something. Now, I can build an alternate circuit where the light bulb's connected up to the off position. This is the inverse of what we normally expect, and this configuration is called an inverter or a NOT gate. We can draw it as a triangle with a little circle on the output. When the switch is off, the globe's on, and when the switch is on, the globe's off. Alright, so how many circuits can we make with a single switch and a globe? Well, it turns out the answer is four. The first one is where the output's always off. Now, this is a little useless, and it's equivalent to missing a wire from the circuit. Next is the inverter, followed by the buffer, and finally we have a configuration where the globe's always on, which bypasses the switch and is also a little useless. But the point I want to make is that with one input gate, there are four possible configurations. Excellent. Let's move into two input gates and for this I'm going to need two switches. Let's look at one setup where the on connection of one switch is connected to the common input of the second switch. 
Imagine one switch is the safety switch in your fuse box, and the second switch is the regular light switch inside the house. The globe only turns on when both switches are in the on position. In the off-off setting, electricity can flow out of the plus side of the battery, which I'll call the positive terminal from now on, but the electricity only makes it to switch A and stops. Even if switch B is on, the electricity can't get through switch A. This time, the electricity gets to switch A, goes through it, but it stopped at switch B. Finally, in this switch configuration, the electricity gets to switch A, goes through it, gets to switch B, goes through it too, gets to the globe, dumps some energy at the globe, which is converted to light, and returns to the minus side of the battery, which I'll call the negative terminal from now on. We have a closed circuit. The globe's off for the off-off setting, the off-on setting, and the on-off setting. It only turns on when both switches are on. This is called an AND gate because both the first switch and the second switch need to be on for the output to go on. The AND gate is drawn with this symbol, which is straight on the input but curved on the output. Unfortunately, you just need to memorize this. I'd recommend wiring it up yourself and testing all the combinations. You don't even need a breadboard, you can use alligator clips. Another possible gate is the OR gate. The circuit I've drawn here shows the OR gate. This time, only one of the switches needs to be on for the output to be on. For the OR gate in the OFF-OFF position, the electricity will get to switch A and stop. It'll get to switch B and stop there too. No electricity gets to the globe, and the circuit will be open. In this case, electricity gets to switch B and is stopped, but when it gets to switch A, it can get through, go to the globe, illuminate it, then back to the negative terminal of the battery. This is a closed circuit. For the on-off setting, the electricity is stopped at switch A, but it can get through switch B, the circuit's complete, and the globe gives off light. In the on-on configuration, the electricity can go through both switches and the light's on. With the OR gate, the light goes on if A's on, or if B's on, or if both A and B are on. Here's the truth table for the OR gate. Now, personally, I don't think they should have called it an OR gate, but I'll come back to this point in a later video. That said, it is called the OR gate, and it's drawn with this symbol. It has two curved services, and it's this curved surface on the input that differentiates it from the AND gate. Again, I recommend you wire this up for yourself to get a visceral feel for how it works. Just as an aside, if you've been able to follow how the buffer gate, the NOT gate, the AND gate, and the OR gate work, then you've achieved the main learning goal for this video, and you know enough to move to the next one. This next section is a little more advanced, so don't be afraid if it doesn't make much sense the first time you watch it, but stick with it and you'll get there. Okay, we've looked at the AND and OR gates, but how many gates can we make with two inputs? Well, it turns out there are 16 different truth tables. Consider this mystery unassigned two input gate. We know that there are only four possible binary combinations of the inputs off 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 on, on off, and on on. This is the binary count for two bits. Now, let's call the output of the off off position S. We don't know what the value of S is yet, but we know it has to be either off or on. Similarly, for the off on setting, we'll call that output T. Again, it can only be off or on. We do the same thing for on off and on on and these are called U and V respectively. I'm going to change convention here and switch from using on and off to using 0 and 1, just because it makes things a bit easier to draw. Let's start with our truth table, and we have four binary variables, S, T, U, and V in the output positions. Now let's walk through all the combinations of these. Remember our 4-bit binary counter from last video? Well, we're going to do exactly the same thing, 
but this time we're going to go from left to right instead of top to bottom. For S we just alternate 0 and 1. For T we need two zeros and two ones and repeat. For U it's four zeros and four ones then repeat. And finally for V, it's just eight zeros and eight ones. Hopefully you can see the similarity between our old binary count and this new one. Next, I'm going to distribute these out all over the page. But we still have 16 unique binary patterns. Now, I'll turn each of these possible combinations of S T, U and V into a truth table. So now I've got 16 truth tables, and this represents 16 possible two input gates. In the top left corner, the output's always zero, no matter what the A and B inputs are. This is called always off, and it's not that useful. Similarly, the output in the truth table in the bottom right's always one, so we'll call this always on. Again, not super useful, so I'll remove these from our list. OK, let's move to this gate here. If we look at this gate, it doesn't matter what B is, the output C is always the same as A. So this is really just a buffer on A. Same here with B. If we ignore A, then C is just the buffered output of B. These aren't two input gates. Here, the output C is the inverse of A. This is a NOT gate. And in this case, C is not B. I'll remove all four of these, and this leaves us with ten remaining truth tables. OK, in this truth table, A and B have to be 1 for the output to be 1, so this is our old friend, the AND gate. In this truth table down here, the output's 1 if A is 1, if B is 1, or if both of them are 1. So, this is the OR gate. Now that we know what these two truth tables do, we can remove them, and that leaves us with 8 left over. Four of these are named gates, and we'll go over them later in the series, but the remaining four are unnamed gates. These are still valid, they just don't have a common name. I think I'll end this video here, but in the next video we'll look at how to combine gates to form larger gates. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.